Hello, my name's Sean Seeger and I'm a lecturer in literature at the University of Essex. In this short video I'm going to say a bit about my academic interests and about some of the research projects that I'm currently working on. My main interests cover 20th century literature, modernism, utopian and dystopian literature and cultural studies. Over the last five years, my work has turned increasingly in the direction of utopias and dystopias, so that's going to be the main focus of this video. I've been fascinated by this kind of literature since I was a teenager, but I put it to one side during my PhD, which was a study on an unrelated topic. My interest in utopias and dystopias was rekindled, however, by the publication of several books during 2015-16. These included Paul Mason's Post-Capitalism, Nick Srinik and Alex Williams's Inventing the Future, and Pete Fraser's Four Futures. These were all books projecting immense changes in society due to imminent developments in science and technology. In each case, the possibilities opened up by automation, robotics, artificial intelligence and other new technologies were seen as anticipating an egalitarian post-scarcity society. One thing that struck me about these and numerous other related titles was their explicit utopianism. As various commentators have shown, the idea of utopia has been very much out of fashion since the collapse of the Soviet Union and the onset of neoliberal capitalism. I was surprised then to find that these widely read and in some cases best-selling texts were advancing an avowedly utopian agenda. It seemed that the concept of utopia was ready to be reappraised and that large-scale social dreaming was back on the cultural agenda. In 2016, however, the combination of the election in the US and Brexit referendum in the UK served as a dystopian rejoinder to the rekindled utopian hopes of the previous year. An aspect of these phenomena that seemed ripe for further study was the kind of commentary it was attracting. Reporting and cultural commentary on automation, global heating, the rise of right-wing populism and other major social trends was often couched in explicitly utopian and dystopian terms. Of particular interest to a scholar of literature was the fact that so much of this discourse made use of tropes, imagery, figures and ways of thinking taken from the utopian, dystopian and science fiction literature of the 19th and 20th centuries. My reading in the area provided part of the inspiration for a new undergraduate module at Essex, LT250 Dystopias, which looks at the many varieties of dystopia from Huxley and Orwell to Octavia Butler and the film Snowpiercer, and which I'm just about to teach for the fourth time. Over the last five years, I've written a number of articles and book chapters on utopia and dystopia and their relationship to social and political thought. As well as publishing essays on the history of dystopian literature, theorists of dystopia like Mark Fisher, and popular dystopian works like the film Blade Runner 2049, I've also been collaborating since 2019 with the sociologist Daniel Davison Vecchioni, University of Cambridge, on a series of journal articles on the connections between speculative literature and social theory. Our first article, Dystopian Literature and the Sociological Imagination, begins from H.G. Wells's famous observation that, quote, the creation of utopias and their exhaustive criticism is the proper and distinctive method of sociology. 
Drawing on a range of theorists, we make a case for viewing dystopian literature as potentially a potent exercise of what the sociologist C. Wright Mills termed the sociological imagination. In our most recent piece, we place the work of the science fiction writer Ursula Le Guin into a similar dialogue with cultural anthropology in order to see what contribution her fiction might be able to make to utopian thought today. Here, Le Guin's imaginative accounts of alternate societies where, for example, the gender binary does not pertain, or where humanity lives in harmony with nature, are among our case studies. One thing my colleague and I are particularly interested in is the role of the imagination in how we think about society. A common thread running from Wells through C. Wright Mills down to more recent sociologists like Ruth Levitas is the thought that in describing society we are always at the same time prescribing how we wish it to be. On this view any critical reflection on the way we live necessarily draws on presuppositions and background ideas about how we ought to live and what human flourishing or the good life might consist in. Following the lead of these thinkers we therefore turn to works of imaginative literature to see what they might be able to offer us in the face of the utopian and dystopian possibilities confronting us in the early 21st century. As well as writing and planning a number of future articles on utopia and dystopia, I'm now in the process of taking notes for a book on utopia, which will draw together much of my thinking over the last few years. I hope this short video has given you a sense of my research and of the kind of work going on in utopian studies today. Thank you.